Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at avoidance behavior when dealing with crowd simulations. There are a number of different options that we'll go through, including avoidance range and timing. You can also adjust various environmental settings via avoidance volume box or nav mesh to help further customize crowd flow, and utilize flocking mode to set specific status in the crowd. You can see here that if we have avoidance behavior disabled, that actors will just walk right through each other. However, we can also select Enable Avoidance from the MD Control's general settings to have the actors in the scene automatically avoid each other regardless of their method of locomotion. Let's look at some of the basic actor settings next. In your actor's IMD data settings, you can tweak the time horizon parameter to set the avoidance timing to be slower or faster. With a value of 1 here, the runner will wait till he's fairly close to the actor in the middle before avoiding. If we increase this value to 2.5, he will have a more gradual avoidance behavior. You can use a higher value here if you find avoidance behavior of certain actors to be too sudden or jerky. Each actor also has an agent radius value as well, which you can think of as a personal force field. With a lower value, approaching actors will avoid the stationary one, but at a smaller distance. A higher value means the approaching actor will give them a wider berth. In addition to individual actor settings, we also have some general settings for avoidance that we can adjust as well. If we have a low root motion override value, there may be some collision between the characters as there is less buffer time when calculating avoidance. However, if we set this to 0.5, you can notice that although there is less collision, this comes at the cost of additional foot sliding. At a full value, there is no collision, but foot sliding will be more egregious. Therefore, this is a parameter to use selectively depending on your camera perspective. At a longer distance, this type of behavior will be less noticeable. Reduce backtrack is an important option to be aware of. When this is disabled, you'll encounter more situations where your character may turn back and retrace their steps to avoid any barriers or other characters. This can lead to some awkward spin move type movement. However, if reduced backtrack is enabled, characters will exhibit smoother forward progression. There is also the option to reroute stuck agents. If this is disabled, you'll encounter a weird progression where your actor will awkwardly stop and then return to their origin point instead of going around the actor in their way. If it's enabled, you may encounter similar awkward behavior, but at least the actor will calculate a route around the barriers or other actors that are obstructing their path. By tweaking these values in combination, you can get the character through a lot of obstructions to their destination in a reasonably natural way. There are also a number of settings using avoidance volume boxes and nav meshes that can help to optimize avoidance behavior as well. In our first scenario, you can see that I've already set up a nav mesh to restrict actor movement to the determined area, but the flow of the crowd is still pretty random and chaotic. Let's select our nav mesh controller and go to the modify panel to create an avoidance volume box. Then scale it and place it in the middle. Be sure to click Update to update the nav mesh to accommodate these changes. You can hold the Control key and then click and drag to generate additional volume avoidance boxes. There is an avoidance parameter on each volume box as well. A lower value here will decrease the chances that your actors will avoid that particular volume. 
In our first run through, you'll see most actors head towards the right side volume box that has a lower avoidance value. If I lower the avoidance value on the left side volume box as well, then you'll see that more actors will be driven towards that side. If you don't want actors to force their way through a smaller opening, you can generate an additional smaller volume box, place it where you don't want the actors to cross, and then make sure to update the nav mesh. When utilizing a nav mesh, no actors will be able to travel in an area that isn't designated. You can tweak these values and simulate multiple times to get the results you want. Finally, let's take a look at flocking behavior, which allows you to control multiple actors simultaneously. You can use the player control mode to bring a group of actors to your intended destination. However, you can see that they will all crowd into that one limited area once they arrive. What you can do to overcome this is use the middle mouse button to activate flocking mode, indicated in the top right. Now when you dictate a location using player control mode, the actors will maintain their spacing from each other when making their way to the destination. You can use flocking mode to move groups of characters easily around in an environment that contains multiple barriers while maintaining a minimum distance from each other to prevent awkward avoidance behavior. That's it for this tutorial guys, thanks for watching! Be sure to check out our other crowdsim tutorials for more tips and tricks, and I'll see you in the next video.